Okay, so welcome to the second video on uh, calcium channels versus pumps. So in the first video, I just basically gave more of an introduction to um, the whole playlist, uh, rather than an actual discussion of what the difference between a calcium channel and a calcium pump is. In this video, we're going to tackle the topic of what is the difference between a calcium channel uh, and a calcium pump. Okay, right. Uh, so um, let's... Um, Let's start with what a calcium channel is. So basically, uh, a nice cartoon for a calcium channel, so I'll just put that title, calcium channels. And this doesn't just, what I'm going to say, doesn't just hold for calcium channels, but it holds for all sorts of ion channels in general. Okay, so what is an ion channel? Well, basically, it's a protein that sits in the cell membrane, so let's draw the phospholipid by there here. And basically, it's a protein that generally has two conformations, okay? So I'll draw it like so. It has a, a conformation where it is closed. So there's the closed conformation. And it has a conformation where it is open. So I'll draw this as the open conformation. Okay, so it has two conformations. And when it's in the open conformation, it's then capable of allowing calcium ions to pass through it, basically. It's capable of conducting calcium ions. So this is the open conformation. Okay, and this portion of the channel which changes in conformation to, to lead to the channel opening, uh, which I've cartoonly drawn like this, is known as the gate. I've, I've made it look as though it really is like a gate, like, you know, a garden gate or something. Uh, that's to make the cartoon look nice and simple. Uh, in reality, these gates can be very, very complicated structures. Uh, they're not just going to be like a, like a you know, like a, uh, a piece that just moves out of the pore. Okay, so this is... But um, the cartoon does demonstrate the principle of the gate. The gate is something that is going to change conformation uh, and has a conformation where it will block uh, the calcium ions, or whatever ion it is, from moving through the channel. And it has another conformation where it will actually allow calcium ions, or whatever ion we're interested in, to move through the channel. And then it also has this closed conformation, so I'll just continue uh, writing that close confirmation. Okay, so when a channel opens, and there are multiple different things that can cause it to open, some of these channels are ligand gated, so uh, when a certain ligand binds to them, that will cause the gate to um, change confirmation and open the channel. Uh, some of them are voltage gated, so when the electrical potential difference across the membrane is a certain, uh, it, you know, is disturbed, distorted somewhat, that will cause uh, the channel to open. Either they'll have a certain electrical potential which they open. Okay, electrical potential difference rather across the membrane at which they'll open. Okay, uh, so what happens when they are actually open? Well, in the case of calcium channels, calcium we know is much, much higher outside the cell. So the calcium concentration extracellularly, so these square brackets mean the concentration of calcium, and I'll just put an E there to denote it's the extracellular calcium concentration, we know is approximately equal to 1.5 millimolar. And we know that the intracellular calcium concentration, so calcium concentration intracellularly, so I'll put an I there, is approximately, again, 100 nanomolar. Okay, so calcium is much, much more densely, um, dense, is much denser in the extracellular fluid. So let me denote that with a little picture. So let's denote calcium ions by an orange. Um, so on this extracellular space, you have very dense concentration of calcium. So calcium ions are very highly concentrated. They're very dense, or lots of them all over the place. Whereas in the intracellular compartment, maybe it looks more like that. So they're very, very far apart. They're not very dense. They have low concentration. Okay, so if you open this channel, this channel, I mean, some channels are uniporters. They only allow ions to flow through them in one direction. But most channels uh, will allow ions to flow through in both directions. Now, what has to happen is a calcium ion has to actually hit this pore, and then it can go through it. Okay, uh, now, um, if you think about this, which event is more likely? 
A calcium ion from the intracellular aspect hitting the intracellular aspect of the pore and going through it, or a calcium ion from the extracellular um, uh, aspect hitting the extracellular aspect of the pore and going through it. Well, obviously, it's the extracellular calcium hitting the extracellular aspect of the pore and going through it. So overall, the number of calcium ions that move in this direction through the channel is going to be bigger than the number that actually hit it in this direction and go through that way. So you're going to have, get much more calcium coming into the cell uh, this way through the channel than you are going to get uh, moving out of the cell. So when these calcium channels, which can conduct in either direction, open, uh, you're going to get a net movement of calcium in. And that's not that only calcium is coming in. There will be some calcium ions that go in the opposite direction, uh, but uh, the number moving in totally dominates the number moving out. So you, the overall movement, the net movement, is into the cell. Okay, so when... Uh, Calcium channels in the uh, cell membrane open, they lead to calcium entry into the cell, and that's going to elevate calcium levels in this vicinity of the channel quite dramatically, and that can, uh, that can carry a signal, basically. It can cause changes within the cell. Okay, so that's the principle, I think, of all I want to say on channels at the moment. Uh, so um, now let's turn our attention to what a gate is. Okay, so now we'll talk about calcium, uh, oh sorry, not what the gate is, calcium pumps. Let's change our tact and talk about calcium pumps. Okay, so calcium pumps actually move calcium in uh, a specific direction, and it's often against the concentration gradient. So let me redraw the cell membrane here. Okay, um, so um, we know that the calcium concentration extracellularly is far higher than the calcium concentration intracellularly. So the concentration extracellularly, as I've said, is approximately 1.5 millimolar. Okay? Whereas the concentration of calcium intracellularly is approximately uh, 100 nanomolar. So 100 nanomolar. Right. Okay. So what a calcium pump is going to do is... Um, that, for an example, it could move calcium from the intracellular aspect to the extracellular aspect. So it could take calcium ions from here and move them specifically extracellularly. And I'm going to show you the basic principle of how that is achieved. So the main difference between calcium pumps and calcium channels is that calcium pumps have to have two gates. And this is a cartoon, but we'll see how, in upcoming videos, how this actually does reflect the real-world situation. Okay, so basically, they have two gates. So let's show two gates. So they have a usually a cytosolic gate and also an extracellular gate. So there's now two gates. So there is this extracellular gate here, and there is this cytosolic gate here. Right. And at the moment I've drawn both gates closed, that wouldn't usually happen, but it, it might be in that state transiently. So this is the cytosolic gate, cytosolic gate, and uh, this pink one is the extracellular gate. Now I'll show you the process of how they, these are going to actually achieve the specific movement of calcium out of the cell, rather than uh, allowing it to go both ways. And that's the main difference between pumps. And the, the main difference is that they allow calcium to go in a specific direction that they want it to go, whereas channels uh, can allow calcium to go both ways, and pumps will move calcium against concentration gradients. And also, bear in mind that it's against the electrical gradient as well, because the intracellular aspect of the cell membrane is a lower electrical potential than the extracellular aspect. The electrical potential difference across the membrane is minus 65 millivolts, which means that the intracellular compartment is negative 65 millivolts lower in electrical potential than the extracellular compartment. Now, calcium is a divalent cation. It wants to go where the electrical potential is lower. Now, that's lower in the intracellular compartment, so it's going to want to come into the cell. So you've got to consider that as well, that the electrical gradient is trying to move calcium into the cell as well as just the concentration gradient. Okay, uh, so um, well, where was I? Extracellular gate as well here. Extracellular gate, right. Okay, so let me show you uh, how these pumps are going to work. 
So, what's going to happen initially is that this cytosolic gate is going to be open. So, uh, an example of how this might work is that the cytosolic gate will open whilst the extracellular gate is still closed. So, this one's closed still, over here, uh, whilst the cytosolic gate is now open. Now, what can happen is that calcium can come and bind in the pore of the um, pump, um, even though the extracellular gate is still closed. So, calcium ion comes in here, so this is a calcium ion here. That's our calcium. Okay, so it's come into the uh, pore of the pump whilst the uh, cytosolic gate is open. So this is a calcium ion. Okay, and basically what now happens is that the extracellular gate, is, well, the cytosolic gate is going to close and the extracellular gate will open, basically. Okay, so here's our calcium. The uh, cytosolic gate is going to close and then after the cytosolic gate is closed, the extracellular gate will open. Okay, and basically that means that we can move our calcium ion out of the uh, cell without allowing uh, calcium ions to enter the cell through the channel. Uh, so it favours the movement in one direction, basically, and it allows, basically, the, um, the movement of the calcium out of the cell. Now, you might ask, how do we achieve this conformational change? How do we assure that um, this uh, cytosolic gate closes and then the extracellular gate opens? Well, basically, what has to happen is to achieve that conformational change, you have to hydrolyze ATP. So what will happen is that ATP will be hydrolyzed to ADP. And, it, um, and generally what happens is that the phosphate group from the ATP is then bound to this channel. That causes a change in conformation, which um, firstly closes the cytosolic gate, opens the extracellular gate, and also changes the affinity of the pump, of the protein, uh, for um, binding to the calcium. And that basically kicks the calcium out. So the calcium doesn't want to bind anymore because it's changed, the protein has changed structure and it's no longer got the same affinity for calcium that it originally had. Okay, so that's the main difference between a calcium pump and a calcium channel. That the calcium pump has two gates and that allows it to pump things uh, against the concentration gradient, whereas calcium channels are basically just holes in the cell membrane through which calcium can move.